Side note, once more, your English translation of choice will likely betray you and the author of the book called Matthew. It is not through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived in her, even though that's perfectly fine for our creed, but rather through a lowercase h, holy, lowercase s, spirit, that this child has been conceived in her. In this culture, there simply is no secondary in, impersonal causality. There is, in the Hebrew language, there is no verb, there's no words for the English expression, it rained. It's always God sends the rain, or God gives the rains, or something like that. It's not, you know, don't allow me to fall into temptation, it's don't lead me into temptation. And this is what the Holy Father is trying to do in the liturgy. We don't have that. We have an understanding. We have developed an understanding of secondary inter impersonal causality. When you get sick and you have a fever, do you think that that's a non-human person inside you called fever? But Jesus did. When, the, when, 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 when Peter's mother-in-law got sick with a fever, Jesus exorcised the fever out and fever left her. Left her? Like walked out? Exactly. That's an other than human person. You understand there's nothing, you understand that when we, sickness is a universal event. I should say illness is a, human, a, a, a universal event. All humans and all cultures experience it. But this, there's, a, there's, there's the healing view and there's the disease view. Or I should say there's the sickness view and there's the curing, uh, the, the disease view. We're biomedical in our culture, so we have a disease view. We look for uh, the, uh, uh, an impersonal cause, right? We look for pathogens, we look for viruses, we look for infections, and then we look for a silver bullet, don't we? To, to destroy it, to, to, to repair the biomedical malfunction, we call disease. The word disease should never be in your Bible. They don't know disease. Their culture doesn't perceive and interpret reality that way. Culture shapes what you can perceive, folks. What they have is the healing view or the, the, the sickness view. When they see illness, they see it as a sickness. And that means something that takes away meaning from human life. So healing is restoration of meaning. When Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, she can then go and function as a mother-in-law again in this society. She has found meaning. By the way, we're, that's so important for human beings to, to have meaning restored to them. We don't have too much meaning in this culture, do we? We're a freaking number, aren't we? We're a, we're, a, we're, a, we're a net worth, right? Isn't that what we are in this culture? We're a, if you're in, in college, we're a medical bill, or I'm mean, sorry, not medical, but we're 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 a, we're a, a debt value, right? That's what we are. But in this culture, they were much better at finding meaning and healing. And by the way, if we're Christian, we're called to heal people, not necessarily cure them. You can die of bone cancer five minutes later and find healing. Healing is restoration of meaning to human life. You see the difference. You see, we're reading all these, these American ideas into this ancient text, and we're gucking up the works. There's no impersonal causality in the Bible. A person is, if something happens, whatever happens, good or bad, or mischievous or whatever, someone is responsible for it, always. A person. And if it's not a human who, it's got to be an other than human who. It's got to be an other than human person, spirit. Whenever something happens, therefore, the question is not what happened, but who done it. And if you cannot find a human who, a human person, then you must assume that this or that happened because an other than human person caused it. Other than human persons would be spirits, right, according to anthropologists. For example, seen biblically, God is an other than human person himself. We might say herself. But person is the key thing. So Joseph gets the message that an other than human person, indeed a good other than human person, indeed a sky servant from God, is responsible for this pregnancy. It's to fulfill the will of God. Therefore, the benefit, there, and therefore Joseph, without the benefit of amniocentesis, he's able to learn the sex of the child and even the name that he will give the boy. You are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Yeah, Yeshua is Yah saves, Yahweh saves. Are we liking this? Yes. It's interesting. All right. 
So now let's jump over to verse 24. Matthew chapter 1, verse 24. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Which we all know what that means, right? From the last class. That means there's a big parade. He's going to pretend like she wasn't pregnant. Everybody, everybody there knows that she's pregnant, but we don't want the machetes to come out. And therefore, we're going to, because it's honor shame culture, we're going to go ahead and wink along with it. And, and guess what? At a certain point, a certain sheet has to be produced with blood on it, right? But we know that couldn't come from Mary. But you better believe there's going to be blood on that sheet. So when Joseph awoke from the dream, he had gotten the solution. He does as the Lord commands him. 